Hey y'all, let's look at what are called coin problems, which is again an unfortunate name here. Let's fix this. Coin problems sound so negative. Well, that word just sounds really negative, so let's fix that. All right, so it says money problems. So, okay, money puzzles. That sounds a little better there. Okay, anyway. All right, well, let's slide into this easily. So you tell me, write algebraic equations for these two these sentences. There are two numbers which add up to 40. How would you write that as an equation? Yeah, you just go, you know, I don't know, a plus b or x plus y, whatever. a plus b equals 40. That doesn't mean they're both 20. One could be 39, one could be 1, but, you know, we could, we could figure that out, right? We need another equation, though, okay? How about this one? You tell me this one. There are six more boys than girls. There are six more boys than girls. So boys equals, there's, boys have more of them, right? So the boys would be girls plus six, right? Okay, that's not too hard, right? Okay, that's the kind of thing we do for coin problems. All right, let's do another one, another set. There are 40 nickels and dimes. Let's do that. How would you write that as an equation? There are 40 nickels and dimes. Yeah, you could go n plus d equals 40, right? We don't know. <clears throat> You've got a big pile of them. We don't know how many of eats right now. We just know there's a big pile of them, okay? How about this one? Look at this. There is $4.65 in nickels and dimes, okay? Clue on this one. Here's how you do it. If somebody just went, hey, here, and threw a big pile of nickels and dimes right on a big table in front of you, how would you count the money? Well, the easiest way to count the money, how would it be? Yeah, I mean, I mean, I don't think I would just sit there and take, okay, five cents, then, oh, there's 10, 15 cents, oh, there's another 10, 25. I think you, I would pile them in a two piles, right? Pile of nickels and a pile of dimes, right? So let's say you just wanted to do the nickels, right? You, you would say, okay, how much money here is in the nickels? What would you, what would you do? You would count the number of nickels, right? There's, let's say there's 20 nickels. You'd say, okay, I can figure out how, many, how much money there is in a bunch of nickels because I'm just going to go 20 and multiply it by the time, by the uh, uh, number of nickels. No, excuse me. I'm going to go five because it's five cents, right? And multiply it by the number of nickels, let's say, right? That's how much money you would find that the nickels were worth, right? Okay, once you did that, you went, okay, five times, okay, how many, coin, how many nickels do I have? Okay, I, I got that. Okay, five times 20 or whatever it is. Okay, how much would you say that uh, the dimes are worth? How would you figure that out? You'd do the same thing except for not a five, but a 10, right? So you'd go, okay, well, I'm gonna add that to 10 times the number of dimes, okay? And then, wait a minute, they're telling me how many cents. There's 465 cents. Okay, well, here's the equation. That's how I do it, okay? And that's the way it's always gonna be. Everything will look you it, it could be pennies, it could be quarters, it could be half dollars. They pretty much stick with nickels and dimes and quarters though in this book, okay? And that's it. You just go, okay, how many nickels do I got? Multiply it by five. I'm gonna add that to, how many dimes do I've got? Do I have, and then multiply it by 10. Oh, they're telling me it equals 465 cents. I'll just make that into an equation, okay? And that is exactly how to solve a coin problem, or excuse me, a money problem, okay? How about this one? There are 80 quarters and nickels. Just there are 80 total piled up on the table. You would say quarters plus nickels equals 80, right? There's 80 of them. Okay, there is $14 in quarters and nickels. So you'd go, okay, you separate the quarters, separate the nickels, you count the number of quarters, and you'd multiply that number by excuse me, quarters, I think I said, but 25, right? Then you'd say, okay, how many nickels do I have? I'll multiply that number by five, right? And okay, and we figured out, okay, that equals $14. How many cents is that? That's 1,400 cents. There's your equation right there, okay? So when you have two unknowns, don't forget, like the X and the Y graphs and the systems of equations, we did elimination and uh, um, substitution. Same thing here. 
you have two unknowns like an x and a y, you need two equations. If you have a q and an n, two unknowns, you need two equations. If you have a q and a d, quarters and dimes, you need two equations. If you have nickels and dimes, you need two equations. Your job here is to figure out the two equations, okay? So let's do one. Jack and Betty have 28 coins that are nickels and dimes, okay? Stop right there. They have 28 coins that are nickels and dimes. How do you write that as an equation? Yeah, you're just going to go, okay, well, the nickels plus the dimes, there's 28 of them. Don't know how, don't know what this number is or that number is. I can't because there's only one equation. I need two equations. The value of the coins is $1.95. Aha, okay. So the second equation is going to be the worth of a nickel, which is 5 times that plus the worth of a dime, which is 10 times that. The total of that is going to be how many cents? 198, right? Excuse me, 95. <clears throat> and that's it. Now, if you recognize this, sitting on top of each other, piled up like that, this is exactly the same thing as doing an X and a Y. So you choose. You can do substitution. You can do elimination. Doesn't matter to me. Whatever you guys, whatever easiest for you. Looking at this being you know, nice and piled up here, I'm just going to go ahead and just do elimination. So I'll make this a 5n to match that. So 5 times n, 5 times d, and then I'll do 5 times 28. And 5 times 28 is 140. Okay, now I'm going to subtract to get that out of there. 5d minus 10d is negative 5d. 140 minus 195 is negative 55. So the number of dimes is 11. Now, probably a good check on your answers would be, hey, I got it. There's negative five dimes. Obviously, there can't be negative five dimes if you have a really bad banker. So the dimes are 11. Well, obviously, if they have 28 coins, your nickels will have to be 28 minus 11 or 17. And we can check this, by the way, make sure it works, okay? If you have 11 dimes, how much money is that? How much money is that worth? dollar and ten cents, right? Okay, you have 17 nickels, 17 times 5 is 85 cents, 85 cents plus a dollar ten, and there you go. Or, or you can just uh, <clears throat> sit there for an hour and <clears throat> actually try, uh, you know, 28 different combinations or whatever many there are. Okay, all right, let's try another one. <clears throat> now your teacher washes cars earning four dollars and 45 cents in quarters and dimes. He has eight more quarters than dimes. How many coins of each type does he have? All right, <coughs> excuse me. Okay, we need two equations. So we have 445 cents in quarters and dimes. <clears throat> so let's do the harder one first, okay? Quarters are worth 25 cents, right? 25 times the number of quarters plus 10 times the number of dimes is going to give you 445 cents. Okay, there we go. The second equation, he has eight more quarters <clears throat> than dimes. So the number of quarters is the same thing as the number of dimes plus eight, right? And that's your second equation. If this is your second equation, probably it's going to be easier to use substitution on this one, right? Okay, so Q is the same thing as the number of dimes plus eight. So let's put the key, that, this here, right there for the Q. <clears throat> so we'll go ahead and go 25, not times Q, but times D plus 8. And don't forget this part. Plus 10 times the number of dimes is 445 cents. Okay. So 25 times D, 25D. 25 times 8 is 200. Plus 10D equals 445, 25D, 10D is 35D. I'm going to move the 200 over, subtract that, it's going to be 245. And, you know, I don't expect you guys to know your 35's tables, but if you piddle around and, you know, try a few things, you'll see that the number of dimes will be 245 divided by 35, which is 7. So the number of dimes is 7, well then you tell me, look at that equation, what is the number of quarters going to be if the number of dimes is seven? It's going to be eight more, right? So seven plus eight is 15. 15 quarters plus seven dimes 
<clears throat> we'll give you $4.45. Your only job is to figure out those two equations, okay? Let's try another one. Ed's life savings after 47 years of work totaled 22 nickels and dimes with a total value of $1.35. That's called retirement. Okay, retirement money. Okay. How many coins of each type did he have? All right? Pause it. Try to see if you can figure out the two equations. Go ahead, pause it, and come back in a second. All right, let's take a look. 22 nickels and dimes. That equation is nickels plus the dimes equals 22. There's 22 of them, all right? The total value is $1.35. Nickels are worth 5 cents. Dimes are worth 10 cents. The whole value is $1.35. So this looks like one of those questions that's a little bit easier to probably use substitution for. So let's go ahead and do it. Five times everything. Five times N. Five times D. And let's do five times 22. And that'll be 20 times five is 100. Two times five is 10. So the whole thing is 110. We're going to subtract. That's going to be minus 5D. That'll be minus 25. So the number of dimes, there are five dimes. Okay. It's a lot of dimes after 47 years of hard work. If there are five dimes, that means there are 22 minus 5 nickels. 22 minus 5 is 17. And if you add that up, that'll be uh, uh, excuse me, 85 cents plus 50 cents, which is $1.35. There you go. Okay. All right. Let's try the two practice problems. Try A, pause it, and uh, come back in a second. All right. 36 coins that are nickels and dimes. Well, that means nickels plus dimes equals 36. The value is 290 cents. Well, something's going to be 290 cents. <clears throat> that means each nickel is 5 cents, each dime is 10 cents, and that's your total value. Okay. And again, this looks like an easier substitution problem. So I'll go 5 times this, 5 times that, and you'll probably have to go over to the side and do your 36 times 5. One easy way to do it is 30 times 5 is 150. 6 times 5 is 30, so 150 plus 30 is 180. Subtract, minus 5 times the dimes. 180 minus 290 is negative 110. So negative 110 divided by 5 is 22. So there are 22 dimes. If there are 36 coins, that means the number of nickels is 36 minus 22. You can check this answer if you want. 14 nickels gives you 70 cents. 22 dimes gives you $2.00 and 20 cents together, that will equal $2.90. There you go. Okay. All right. Try B. Pause it. All right. Emil has $6.45 in quarters and dimes. We'll just do that first. Okay. So the quarters are worth 25 cents. Dimes are worth 10 cents. And all together, it's worth 645 cents. Nine more quarters than dimes. That means the number of quarters is the number of dimes plus nine. There we go. Looks like this is a substitution one. So let's stick that right there. So 25 times, you know what? I'll just go ahead and put D plus nine. So 25 times D is 25D. 25 times nine is 225 plus 10D is 645. All right. So 25D. 10D, that's 35D. All right. Uh, 645 minus 225 is 420. And if you did your division over here, you know, 35 into 420, you would find that the number of dimes is 12. So 12 dimes. If he has nine more quarters, that means he's going to have 12 plus 9 or 21 quarters. And there you go. And if you were to do the math out here, 21 times 25 cents, that's $5.25. 12 dimes is $1.20. Add those together and you will get Emil. No, Emil. No, $6.45, whatever. Okay. All right, that is it for today. See you guys next time.